When we sometimes show you some 100,000 euro or dollar sports wagons, some people write, oh, it's my life's goal to earn so much money to afford that. Well, maybe there's also a way to pay one third of the price and still have a pure race car. Hmm, let's find out if that's possible with the Honda Civic Type R. Here today on our full review on how to fuel your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to take a deep look on this dramatic exterior, the racy interior and of course the driving experience with the acceleration test right at the beginning, also a handling test up the hill also right at the beginning and later on also some more sporty everyday driving fun. Everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! So guys, special performance feature when we start with this vehicle. Let's see about the acceleration. Let's get in the R mode, sportiest mode, and yeah, let's just hammer it at the very beginning. It's a front wheel driven car. That happened. Hmm. I mean, it's a two liter turbo engine. And did you see maybe this uh, when I was hitting the rev limiter uh, that I get the, this red warning? Wow. So they have really styled this car in a super, super racy way. Don't you think so? And also with a very crisp shifting maneuvers with a manual gearbox. I think uh, everyone who wants to have this, this pure race car feeling, but doesn't want to spend 1,000 euros or something for that, but still want to keep in a compact segment, which is still somewhat affordable. And I mean, this car can be used in everyday driving life as anything else. I think you can see if you really want to have it here with the ref matching also when you're shifting down. See that? Shifting up now again, shifting down. And then exactly the right revolutions are matched. Wow. So this seems to be, I can just repeat myself, a very racy, maybe one of the raciest car in this compact Hodge Hatch segment. So, and what about our famous ride up the hill? <laughs> Pikes Peak? No, it's not really Pikes Peak, but something else. Just as good for you and for me. And to test the handling, here in the R mode, the steering is somewhat stiffer, so it's more comfortable in the, in the comfort mode, as it says, and also better for parking in and out. Here, if you want more racing touch, a little bit more resistance from the steering wheel, you can get it in the R mode as well. And then you, you know, feel a little bit more like being on the Nordschleife. And this car, also one of the main characteristics, uh, conveys a lot of safety because you are so much in control. The car is not too big. It feels a little bit bigger and it actually is than, for example, you know, a Golf GTI or Golf R. It's also somewhat more extreme. The Golf R or Golf GTI are more subtle in a way, more elegant also from the exterior. This one here holds what it promises from the exterior. It's really the more extreme approach to the hot hatch and you really feel it also when driving it. Um, well, those guys should keep on their lane. <laughs> Rev matching again when you shift down from third to second gear, for example. Uh, the front wheel drive, well, you don't feel from it so much because of the differential lock as well. Um, if you really push it, uh, then you can feel it. And of course, you cannot uh, slide around with the rear and stuff. But I mean, it also has something to do with safety then. And it is again astonishing that this car with front wheel drive, two liter engine, compact size, and the price, which is you know somewhat just below or around 40,000 euros, can be so racy, and no one has to feel somewhat inferior because 
oh, I'm not riding a 100,000 euro sports car. Who cares? This car is so much fun um, that you have as, as much fun as you would be riding a very much more expensive sports vehicle. So a normal Honda Civic is about 20,000 euros, taking German reference prices. Here the Type R is 36,000 euros. What do you get from it? Well, of course, the dramatic front, you already bigger air intakes, um, carbon fiber here at the lower front spoiler. There's also a carbon fiber package, exterior and interior available, available for more carbon fiber elements, but those ones, a couple of thousand euros, really expensive. Already red contrast overall with the Type R and the red Honda logo, it looks really racy, really stylish racing style, also from an approach in the front. Horizontally drawn headlights, um, there's S, R and GT trim. This one here, the top GT trim level. And beginning with the R trim level, you already have the LED headlights as well. And it really looks like a mid-size vehicle from the front and somewhat it also feels like it, I can already tell you so far. What do you think about this front design approach? 4 meters 55 or 14 foot 9 is the total length and it's showing you that this car is indeed somewhat between compact at the mid-size segment. And also a very dramatic approach here, you know, with um, those uh, air outtake style on the side, big rims with a red line, 20 inch is ex also standard with the Type R, red Brembo brake calipers, then this uh, carbon fiber lower lip and well it's a competition white color, it is optional and you see I've just cleaned the car and drove some and it's already dirty so it is collecting somewhat dirt especially in winter times. Key is entry, you can press this button here then to close the car again with the um, keyless function and well everything of that is rather normal Honda Civic but then well, in the rear here uh, this huge wing is really massive and this is also what distinguishes this vehicle to the other compact hot hatch competitors. This one here is really screaming out, I am the race car and you have to like that of course. Would it be too much for you or is it exactly right? And also especially the rear takes this dramatic approach, look again at this huge wing. Funnily it doesn't block the view from the interior as much as it does look and with the carbon package option by the way the middle part would be carbon fiber of the wing and also the rear diffuser would be carbon fiber. Got some carbon fiber on the top here um, but that's also perfectly fine and this very uh, you know unique three pipe exhaust also stands for itself again really screaming out for sure. By the way, if you're also interested in the normal Honda Civic and also browse through the different generations, there's also another video available at Autogefühl. Tune into that one later. It's really worth it, I can promise you. Now let's continue here with our race version. And here we go with the engine. Two liter displacement, 320 horsepower, 5.7 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That's between the Golf GTI and the Golf R, by the way and adaptive suspension also included in the Type R package. We'll ride that one here soon. And now the interior, nice Alcantara inside of the doors 
are also this carbon fiber style. This is not the carbon fiber package, otherwise those entry caps there would also be carbon fiber. Those ones, the illuminated entry caps that are available. Then you get with the Type R those magnificent sports seats. Wow, look at the racy design, at the color, the mix of a red Alcantara or microfiber and the more airy, let's say, uh, fabric inserts there. Also with the red seat belts. That is just beautifully done for such a race car. Then also red inserts at the steel wheel. Generally, the new layout here of the Honda Civic in this generation is more mid-size uh, alike, definitely, than compact segment that you can clearly see. What do you think? And getting inside, of course, this car sits lower and the sides of the seats are pretty high, so you have to uh, get in there. Um, well, but it's it's actually quite soft still, so it doesn't hurt when you get in there. That happens sometimes with those extreme sport seats. Uh, I found the seating comfort in a normal Honda Civic extremely good. Um, here, for such a sporty car, it's also good. But you have to bear in mind, if comfort is the mo the best, you know, the real focus for you, then the non-super sport seats Honda Civic would be more suitable. Headroom wise, no problem. I'm 1m86 or 6 foot 1 for everyone who has not subscribed yet. If you haven't done so far, do it of course. <laughs> and I mean, you sit like in a mid sized vehicle a little bit. You can also adjust the steering wheel. And, well, reach us very wide there and very smooth maneuver. And you know, pretty wide also how it's with all that's possible. It's really nice. Um, the seat, you can pump it up, y'all. By the way, we had the discussion if it's pump it up, y'all, or pump it up, y'all, all. What do you think? I think both exist somehow, doesn't it? Front and back. And of course, the rear part of the seat can also be adjusted. Well, in, at some bucket seats, it's not possible, but here it is. So, and this, um, this riding position here is really uh, telling you Please drive me, let's race some. And that's also special for this vehicle, of course. Interior overview. Here again, uh, this has some mid-size segment styling to me, somehow. Um, there's, by the way, also a nice brightness button here where I can pretty fastly change the brightness of the display. It's also a nice highlight. Maybe some vehicle owners don't even know that exists. Then red highlights here with the Type R. This one again, the carbon fiber style, not the true one, but it looks pretty real. So I would be satisfied with that. This seven inch screen is optional. You can see you also can have the smartphone connectivity for that. The steering wheel has a perfect size, compact size, really fitting also with the geometry, with the driver, centralized. That's how it's done. Again, the shifting lever, you can really crisply put in all the gears. Just watch that when I drive the vehicle. Um, those parts here, for example, those plastic parts could be done a little bit better, I think. They have some things in the interior where I would say, mm, come on, step it up a little bit, the game. Um, but of course, they have stepped up the game uh, pretty much if you compare it to the predecessor generation, so a big step forward. For example, a Golf GTI or the Golf R would be better from the interior build quality. But then again, it's not that extreme, that emotional. So um, that's again the question, what do you maybe uh, find better if you, if you compare those two? Instruments also have this racing style with the RPM. The top part you have then also a warning indicator uh, when you reach the, um, you know, the, the maximum shifting point. Big digital speed, left side temperature controls for example, and right side the fuel status. Start stop button by the way, here also nice red and it's also, also um, like beating like a heartbeat. Uh, I've seen it in a couple of cars now. It's just a nice feature. Then here the smartphone integration that is possible, but you can also have a standard home screen where you can also connect your phone with Bluetooth. That's also possible. The temperature control works like this normally. If you want to change the vent strength, you have to do it via the screen. That's not uh, possible um, down here, just completely on and off that is working. And last but not least, the GPS would be here, navigation. And you can see you can browse around in it. It could be a little bit faster, but again, it's actually quite okay. Also responsive and can control it like with a smartphone. 
So the rest of the middle console is also interesting here with the separate climate knobs, two zone AC standard equipment for the Type R for both sides here in the front. Then this real metal shifting lever crushing in the gears, pretty nice. You can also get here this uh, inductive charging for your phone, this pad in the front. Otherwise you put it below there and put it in a USB slot for the uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for example. HDMI on the, red, left, on the right side has also then um, the, the 12 volt power supply then here. Further on the middle console, electric handbrake. This is a special car by the way. It even has a special registration. It seems to be the very first one. Fancy, isn't it? And it's here on Autogafu. Then the Type R shifting button for three different modes, Type R, Sport and Comfort. We'll talk more about those when we drive the car. And finally right here, nice Alcantara cover for the middle armrest. And inside you have, for example, here those cup holders, but you can also remove them and have a deeper cup holder there. So, and this one can be moved backwards too and also flipped up. So you have a lot of possibilities and surely you won't get short of beverage holders with this vehicle. And now to the rear. Well, it is not that well processed as the front seats. You have basic um, black fabric in here, so they haven't paid too much attention to that, but still it does the job quite well. Here also at the lower part, there's some you know less quality felt used. So they have some elements again here which are not that well processed, uh, but overall still satisfying, of course. Then Nero might, it does fit for four tall adults here. Um, this. Uh, I think this one should not be real carbon fiber, it's just, you know, this carbon fiber style, but why not? Save some thousand euros for that and it still looks like carbon fiber. Uh, got some gap in here that your knees do fit there somehow. Also, headroom wise, no problem here in the rear. And you flip the seats from here exactly. Uh, it's a one third, two third split. But, ha, ah, nice, you also have the red seat belts here for the rear. Overall, you can comfortably sit here in the rear. Um, well, what about the middle seat? Mm. Well, there is somewhat a middle tunnel in here. You can sit here. It's actually also pretty soft. So if you fit, uh, you know, in the width, you can also drive with three adults here. So again, a sports car that can still be used for your everyday purposes. So this is the cargo area, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it's pretty interesting because this cover is basically split. One automatically shuts here when the, uh, when the, when the boot is closed. And here you can open it like this and really can access it very well. That's great. And you know, easily accessible like with the estate car. And then you can also flip around the seats from here like this. And so you do not have to go around to the rear seats. Well, you could, theoretically, of course, and like this. And then, wow, you have really a lot of space. Also well done and proves again that you can still use this race car also for big carries. But please pay attention when you go out. So, um, you see, it is not that low, but somehow it falls down here a little bit from the line. So. It happened to me once that I hit my head a little bit, so um, pay attention and always push it upwards because sometimes, you know, those things that they go, don't go up that all the time and push a little bit more upward, then it's fine. So don't hit your head, remember it. <laughs> and don't hit your head at this from the outside because it's also pretty massive again. <laughs> so. How does the Honda Civic Type R behave in everyday driving? That's just the comfort mode. And I already felt that, you know, the front wheels are really pulling me. This guy in front of me says with a sticker, I love haters. I don't love haters. But for people who ride such a thing on their car, I can also be a hater for them. <laughs> no, I won't get into it in, in, uh, in any games here. But the thing is that this car really tempts you to start some games here on the road. That can be dangerous, so you have to be aware of that. 
because it always tells you, you know, I'm, I'm basically a race car. So in the comfort mode, you see, you already got the full acceleration, basically. Um, let's see what the differences are, actually. For example, um, I'm going to shift up and then I shift down. Interesting. Even then the ref matching comes. Wow. Interesting. And the car really hits the, the right revolutions. So when the gear is running, it's about three and a half. You see I shift to fifth gear. When I shift down, it's about 3,000. Then it goes up to three and a half, 3,600 to really make the engine fit again for the next gear. Well, I can also put in the sport mode here. Everything's becomes red. Um, I have a little bit more throttle input that works a little bit faster then. Let's see what about the rev matching. It's basically the same. And also the we have the adaptive suspension in here. Let's see if that is any different. Comfort mode. Sport mode. Well, this, the steering gives a little bit harder feedback, that's for sure. And then the R mode. Let's see if this is any different. Well, of course, with manual um, shifting. Oh, yeah, now I feel it's like a little bit more bumpy from suspension then. Um, but the thing is, you know, when you have a manual gearbox, um, the most thing you do yourself with the clutch and um, also, you know, the, the manual shifting and stuff. So um, those driving modes always have a bigger impact if you have an automatic gearbox. That's for sure. But let's see how that one plays out. Of course, if you play around a little bit with the car, the consumption will also go up. But then again, if you drive more motorway, more cruise control and stuff, you can score something about eight and a half liters on 100 kilometers. So just below nine, I would say. Um, if you mix more city driving into it, it will go up rather above nine liters on 100 kilometers. If you want to know what's at an MPG, nine liters slash 100 kilometer in MPG, and then you have it. It's always hard to have it both in your head, both of the figures. I already do that with the with the length, you know, in, in meters and foot. But to do the both of the consumption is, is really hard to do. <laughs> so, and at the moment driving in the R mode, now in the typical city traffic, because that's also important, you will get stuck in traffic also with this car. Too bad. That was here the automatic emergency brake warning me from the car in front of me. Standard equipment for every Honda Civic, well done. So the R mode is somewhat uncomfortable for the everyday driving. It's like blah, blah, blah. It's too, too stiff really for the road. So let me go back to the comfort mode. Ah, yeah, that's a relief. So with the comfort mode setting, steering is way easier, especially when you're parking in and out. And also just when you're riding straight here um, from suspension, that's really better. So, and it's great that you have this solution. So, you know, from the past generation Honda Civic Type R, I had to say that one was too uncomfortable for me in everyday driving. It was still a racy car, but this one here also, you know, with a longer wheelbase in comparison to the predecessor model, it's more forgiving also when you have some, some you know, some potholes in the road. That's definitely better. So this generation, you know, is more suitable that you can also use it for all situations and not only your uh, racing aspirations. I think that's a big improvement to the predecessor generation, also one of the most important things uh, to me, for sure. It is, of course, still stiffer than a normal Honda Civic, and a normal Honda Civic in this current generation is already a very sporty compact vehicle, that's for sure. So, you know, if you're more interested in comfort a little bit than sport, then the Type R is surely nothing for you. You do feel a difference. Then again, if you really appreciate that, then it's exactly rightly done. So, and I think it's perfectly okay um, because everyone who wants to buy the Type R wants to, uh, wants to have the real deal, the racing style, for sure. With a um, special shifting lever here, it's also funny. It can get very cold in winter and hot in summer, of course, because it's real metal. 
um, but it's very good to shift short, uh, short shifting ways to the uh, the overview here is actually not too bad. The car looks so spectacular from, from the outside, but still you can have a quite good view to the rear, um, also to the sides. Everything is rather upright. It's perfectly fine. And one interesting thing is I also thought that with the normal Honda Civic. This one here rather feels like a mid-sized vehicle. That's also the one reason why it does offer you quite some comfort. So it feels like something above the compact segment. You can compare it also with the Škoda Octavia comfort-wise. Of course, they are very, very different cars. But all, my point is also the Škoda Octavia is a little bit above the compact segment size and, and um, uh, comfort-wise already. And this one here also makes this rather grown-up impression, but of course this, in this case here with the Type R, the grown-up sporty impression, like you would be driving a sporty version of a mid-size vehicle, also a very important aspect of this car. The steering is very direct. In the comfort mode it is somewhat light, as I said earlier, um, but again if you want to have it a little bit harder, you can also individualize that sport mode and then steering is a little bit stiffer and those seats here they keep me super tight for more moving around freely in everyday driving I would pick a non-type R with the normal seats but for sport seats they are still somewhat comfortable I mean they surely look great as we've uh, talked about earlier and they really hold you tight and even if you're just um, here in traffic they give you this everyday racing feeling you know, the, you're basically caged in in this seat and it tells you you could be driving on the racetrack at any time. Wow! <laughs> just, this is one of the funny things, um, just being in second gear and accelerating it through, this is what, you know, could spice up your everyday driving life and you don't need a separate sports vehicle and a normal compact car for the city, uh, so this one would still work. This is, I think, one of the you know, most interesting aspects about this vehicle. And again, I think it's really different than with the predecessor generation, because the predecessor was not really suitable for that. So let's go back to the R mode again. Um, what is interesting, let's see if the, um, if the cruise control... Yeah, it's also working in the R mode, so that's separated from that. Adaptive cruise control here, by the way. Uh, we'll soon also test that when we get behind a vehicle. We also have a blind spot the monitor, but it's not so much happening that people overtake you in this vehicle here. Um, <laughs> this rev matching is really great stuff, right? So, third gear, 85 to 100. Plop, that's already it, 110 already. So that's really some performance. Now we have the cruise control, fifth gear, let's see, let's take those on the road here. This ref matching doesn't let me go, so I was like, what? <laughs> really funny. So, adaptive cruise control works fine, keeping distance in the car in front of me. I can also set four levels of distance I want to have. Now the blind spot monitor, let's see on the left side this vehicle there. Now, the light is appearing. So it's also a system that is um, just showing the car in the blind spot when it's at the very blind spot at the moment and not in advance. We've discussed it quite a lot of times. Some prefer it that way, some prefer it the other way. When we're just using cruise control here, by the way, on the motorway, uh, we can actually also go in sixth gear. And then we also can keep the RPM slow. Let's go to the copper mode, see how that one plays out. So 100 kilometers an hour at about 2,400 RPM. Two liter turbo engine, 320 horsepower. And at the moment we have about 8.2 liters of consumption, although I did some acceleration play around. So, I mean, we had some smaller turbo engine which consumed more and considering the horsepower, still quite okay. Of course, in general, those turbo petrol engines, the smaller ones, always consume too much fuel, just in general. Yeah, and now what about sound insulation? Well, that's surely not the, you know, best thing for this vehicle. 
Um, it is quite loud in here. Um, it was massively improved through the new generation. But if you compare it here to the competitors, the competitors are I mean, somewhat ahead. Also, I realized with the normal Honda Civic, the front hood seems to shake a little bit when you're running over uh, higher bumps on the motorway. They could fix that too. Yeah, other than that, for such a sporty vehicle, it's still somewhat comfortable. Even in the sixth gear, the RPMs are relatively high, I think, and also the engine is quite loud from the front. Um, so you have to bear with that. But maybe you also want to have that, of course. And actually, this rev matching. Wow. What a racy car indeed. This rev matching really helps you to accelerate also. So it doesn't happen that you shift down and you're like, and then you get to speed again. It's actually a feature that is not only inspired by racing, but is really making a difference that you're faster, you know, in those um, overtaking situations, for example. Really interesting uh, how they put such a compact vehicle to this price still to a level where it can actually compete with, um, with you know, much more expensive sports cars. The front wheel drive is limiting it somewhat, of course, but again, you know, I think they've, uh, they've pulled out, you know, what, what they had with, with the price they have, with the size, with the power. At, for this moment, I think they, they made the maximum they could get of this car, um, you know, performance and, and racing feeling-wise. And now to our conclusion for today, Honda Civic Type R. For sure, among the compact hot hatches, it is the raciest, the most dramatic one. It looks that way, it feels that way, it drives that way. And if you want a more elegant approach and a little bit more drawn back, not that dramatic, then you're probably happier with the Hyundai i30N with a Golf GTI, with a Golf R and stuff. But if you want that pure racing approach, then you're right here with the Honda Civic Type R. Exterior-wise, it's surely love or hate, this dramatic layout. On the interior, well, beautifully done also with the sport seats with the red contrasts. They have some elements they lack still in build quality that should be fixed and also behind the competition. But still, I think the interior, especially when you compare it also to the predecessor, very well done. Also good in comfort considering the sportiness of this vehicle, also with modern features than we've seen and some nice Alcantara highlights. Also the space you have, rear seats and also in the trunk is perfectly fine, but this car is still suitable for both racing and everyday driving life. And of course the driving experience is such a fun vehicle so much performance and it really teases you to race. You have to pay attention to the speed limits and I can just stress it again, you do not need to pay 100,000 euros to have a real pure sports car. This is already one and you can just have as much fun with it. Now I want to hear your opinion, put me those in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, keep supporting us.